Thank you. And all my questions are relative to the overview. The first is um, point the of order. Point of order, please, Chair. Um, there are some people that are speaking on item 6A, and then there are some that are on the first item called the order. Right. So when I, it, the, they had not switched it back down when we started requesting to speak. So the Got ones it. on call to order, I guess, as requested to speak to her. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure which list you're looking to call from. I was looking at, it looked like call to order. So let's see here. It prompted me to call to order. Right, Although if you hit details, it goes to the one that. It does. So I, th th I do th see now Commissioner Farrington is the first one on that list. But <laughs> Commissioner Kleinfeld, did you want to speak initially? Were you prompted to call of order? You were? I, I was sent to call to order, yes. I was requesting to speak on this agenda item. OK. So why don't we start with Commissioner Kleinfeld? And I cannot get back to the call of order, so I can't see who else is on that list. So maybe, if Crystal, if you can let me know or call those individuals. And then I can see Commissioner Farrington, Commissioner Matuzak, and Commissioner Song on the speaker list for um, this item that we're talking about. OK. We're having a fair, fabulous fair, fair time enough. with technology today. OK. Uh, with respect to the request that's coming from Martha T., is that going to be coming during the budget process, or do we just need to be aware of it during the budget process? way that it did two years ago we actually built it into the budget ordinance the appropriations ordinance and Kevin spoke about it as part of his budget okay so we're not going to have a separate vote on it then uh, that's not our intention I can't okay I, I can't remember what we did two years I think we built it into the no we actually we had a separate vote because it was hotly debated yeah. I remember that um, but I don't have a know separate, the timeline on it. You could have a separate vote. I think we still would need to build it into the appropriations ordinance. So okay. I, so if you did that, we'd still build it into the appropriations ordinance. Or you could just leave it as part of the approval of the appropriations ordinance. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> the 5% increase in property value. Um, um, you know, I was recently at a NACO thing, and uh, they have our housing market in this area as extremely overvalued. I don't know what statistics you guys are looking at. They have a map that is um, extremely overvalued, overvalued, correctly valued, undervalued, and extremely undervalued. So now I need to know where, now I know where I should be buying property <laughs> as, to, as opposed to where I am. But they have our region is extremely overvalued, so I'm concerned there's a correction coming there. Could possibly be. I think, I, again, the inflationary impact is 3.4. Or 3.3 so we need as of the end of this year values need new value new construction needs to go up a point and a half okay and so I think we get to five and then again if you have 0.2 or 0.3 percent a month inflation then you get to your three percent just by inflationary factors in 2020. See, and I, I don't know that we're going to have inflationary factors. I believe there's going to be a correction, and I think Joe's Could thinking be. there's going to be a correction, too. It, we can, you know, we don't have to debate it here, but right. I, I mean, that's kind of what the indications that I'm hearing is there's a correction coming to our area. And, and, and so I don't know um, if you're not hearing that. Joe, I think you're in you're getting the same indication we got a correction coming and and we are nationally where they study this we are ranked as um extremely overvalued Hot, uh, yeah. so just just to put that on your mm -hmm. radar um and real quick on the dispatcher move um you you said something in in when we we met earlier and i'm i missed exactly what you said but i was a little confused if you move the dispatchers out the money you would be moving out as well correct correct so that would offset each other not, not necessarily because we don't contract for every dispatcher so we have dis we have 59 dispatchers i think we contract for 40. so we have personnel that dispatch for the other communities in the county that either don't have their own dispatch function or don't contract for, with us. 
if that makes sense. So we, yeah, I am confused right. because it, it, no matter whether we're contracting at all the, or, or not, the cost is the cost. Right. So if you move it from one fund to another, whatever you're using to fund it, you would be well, moving. Okay. So you, you, you would be moving that as well, and that would be an offset. There would be a decrease in revenue in, in, equal to the decreasing expenses in the general fund. Correct. I, I'm with you now, Commissioner. So what what I was saying or thought you were saying is we're moving charges for services, but we're also moving general fund contribution to, to make up that difference. That's why I was wondering right. why, it, why it changed the, the cost change in personnel, because they seem to be, it seems to be a wash. Right. So it doesn't you, matter if, where it is in- Well, what's what, not a wash in what is on the schedule of new positions is there's five new positions being recommended for dispatch operations that have not been in the general fund before that will be funded with fund balance for a few years in that 911 fund. So it's the that's the thing that you right. said when we met earlier is right. is there's an offset because there's going to be a use of fund balance Correct. that's sitting in that fund. And what so in that fund there's also money being spent for some maintenance IT related maintenance contracts, some equipment, those sorts of things. But prior to this, we weren't drawing down on that fund balance. So that's what off the offset Correct. is. That's the offset right. is we're going to draw down on fund so balance. We're, we're taking whatever we're spending in the general fund, moving two revenue sources over general fund contribution, charges for services, revenue. But there's still other expenses that have been recorded in there, plus new expenses that'll be going in if the board approves the budget request, which is for five new positions to fund, to, to staff the okay. dispatch and then, operation. Um, um, the bond, the last thing I have is the bond proceeds on the retiree health care cannot be used to count towards how funded we are. But the debt also that we owe on that pot of money also isn't counted when we're looking at the percentage funded, correct? Correct. Okay. So what they look at is... And I know we're doing very well, but when we right. look at the, the... And we say that doesn't even count the proceeds from the money we're making off of investing those bonds, it also doesn't count for the how many, a couple hundred million that we correct. still owe. Right. That it, so there's a huge debt sitting over here as well. Correct. Okay. Right. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, I have Commissioner Haw, then Commissioner Song, Commissioner Farrington, and Matuzak. Just so everyone is aware, just kind of the lineup here. We'll get through this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Since I can't use whatever this thing is, um, two things, and I think you just touched on one of them: the personnel issue, where we're adding 38 positions, and yet we're establishing this new E911 fund that shows a minus half a percent in total personnel costs. Am I correct? I'm looking at slide 11. I have a hard copy too, Steve. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so slide 11 is of the general fund, yes. Right. So it's showing a half a percent decrease in personnel because we're moving out seven million dollars of personnel into a new fund. Into the nine one one. Into the nine one one fund. Okay, and that, as Commissioner Kleinfeld was saying, that also includes, in addition to personnel, an upgrade in the IT services, an upgrade in some of the monitoring. I was just over there this morning, and hearing uh, the improvements that they're looking at making. Those are included in that budgetary item moving into the 911 fund as they well. They will be in the future, Commissioner. Right now, we don't really know how much that cost is going to be, but that's where those expenses will be paid from in the future. Okay. The second one I had is under intergovernmental. You mentioned most of that is roads. Are we addressing Candace Miller requests anywhere in this budget, or is that in intergovernmental? Uh, no, there's nothing in here for Commissioner Miller's request for um, projects that are funded with um, our rescue plan money. 
Is that okay. the, if that's where you're kind of going with that? Yes. We're, right. We all those are know capital she funds, has so a not whole in the budget. list right. of requests out there. Right, exactly. I mean, at one time it was she could spend the entire $171 million. We got plus an additional billion. So <laughs> I, I, where are we going to be looking at and accommodating those? Is that going to be out of That'll the CARES Act money, which when I said $171 million, I want all to understand that's in two incremental payments. Correct. So we got the first $85 million in August, late August. Okay. We'll get the other $85 million next August. They do it a year after. So, relative to Commissioner Miller's request, sort of the sequence of events will be trying to figure out how much the other two projects, big projects, are going to cost the Central Intake and Assessment Center, and whatever the decision is relative to for cooling and the operations there, either renovate it or tear it down and build it up, basically. That will determine what's left to do other things with including how much we can or cannot allocate to Commissioner Miller's projects. Okay. Those things all come to you through different actions separate from the budget. When we first started talking <clears throat> about the budget, there were three, I'll say tunnels, channels, public safety, environmental, and social services. Those were the three? Yeah, so we got the whatever we're going to do with everything in Verkulin, so public health, central intake and assessment at the sheriff department, and then environmental projects, drain projects, whatever right. you want to call them for Commissioner Miller. Those are the three main ideas, three main projects. So in our structural expenditures, we are looking at the upgrading of the jail, but not a new jail, right? Right, so we've got the central intake and assessment, which includes um, a mental health wing, if you will, an infirmary or a medical wing, more of a central intake center, and then the capital plan has maybe about $12 million of improvements in 2022, at least, for the tower, sanitary sewer lines, there's fencing on the upper levels of the pods so that um, folks can't jump over and try to commit suicide. Um, there's uh, there's two or three others that are, uh, add up to about $12 million. Thank you. I, and lastly, I do want to mention that you're giving a lot of credit to the commissioners, including myself, for our retirement board status. You as well sit on all three of these boards and monitor basically everything we do. So congratulations <laughs> to you as well. Appreciate That's it. That's all Thank I you. have, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve, for that presentation. I'll try to keep my questions high level, but um, I don't know. We'll probably talk a little bit more. That's um, fine. I may, I may defer to department sure, heads. Sure, absolutely. Things. So, um, in, in regards to the jail, um, the twelve million dollar uh, capital projects. I know um, with COVID, we saw the population decrease, and you know that really shows that you know when we think outside of the box that we can you know reduce the size of the population in the jail and so some of these capital improvements i mean does that take into consideration that you know that we continue to keep the population low and we find alternative ways to it does support it does so as i understand kind of the primary idea behind the central intake and assessment center is to bring people in assess them and get them out back into the community better you know um, I'll say better more improved uh, medical wing so you have more isolation and segregation if you will quarantine areas if something like COVID ever happens or continues um, and then the other projects in the tower are to maintain the tower which the sheriff has I think in the past indicated maybe to, to the board has indicated to me, probably will when he, you're, he's before you in a few weeks, that if the population stays in that 600 range, then we can do with the tower. We don't need the older sections of the jail. Sure, absolutely. And yeah. I've, I've toured the the jail, so I, you know, I'm all for updating it. I, I completely agree. Yes. 
No, how such um, was a and scary the place. In, but the intake that you're talking about is not a part of the capital projects. That's that's a proposal from the ARP funds, right? It's on the capital plan. You'll see if when again we didn't transmit um, the capital plan until this afternoon. You'll see in 22 and 23, you'll see those projects on the list, but they're also listed as being funded with grant funds. Okay. So I um, think we. What, I think what we, grant funds though? Which rescue plan? The rescue plan. Rescue plan. So the. Okay, so this budget does include some of the ARP money then. The budget itself yes. does not, because it's on the capital plan. But it's funded okay, with grant dollars. Okay, got it. And it's one million dollar yeah. of the grant, one million dollars. So, twelve million, eleven of it being funded by the general fund, one million from grants and other sources. In twenty twenty two. So, the the thought is that this project really won't get off the ground until twenty twenty three, and which is when the we start spending down the grant money we have today in the bank. Okay. It, Great. I, yeah, I just did want to make, because it kind of sounded like maybe we were working backwards, hoping that some of these projects would be funded with the ARP and then not included in the general budget. So kind of like with, yeah, I with Commissioner I, Hall's question about the public accounting. works. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to start trying to confuse the issue with technical accounting jargon. But all of those projects are capital in nature. So all that revenue will go into capital projects funds, which are not in the budget. That's why you don't see it in the budget. Because what's in the budget is the general fund and what we call special revenue funds, if you will. What you will see coming before you with all those projects are all the related contracts. And you'll get those dollars or those projects on the quarterly financial report as well when I submit the quarterly capital plan update once those projects start really taking place. Okay, thank you. And then um, my next question is in regards to slide nine. And um, well, the con contractual, the contract services, you mentioned that 26% is about mental health and substance abuse. What else would fall under that? Would it be contracts with um, individuals, contracts with other com companies, and why is mental health and substance abuse those contracts not separated, kind of like what you've done with the the nine one one. They are. They're in. They're in. This on slide nine is just a big, high level. Everything combined into one pie graph. What you'll see as you go through the budget document, sort of toward the very back. Um, and I'll tell you where it's at. So community mental health is on page E4, substance abuse is on E5. You'll see the contract services dollars there. So it's 24.2 million for substance abuse, 204 and a half million for mental health. Okay. So it's in those, it's in individual funds, um, which are all included in here. Okay, thank you, got it. And I'm most excited about the road fund. Well, so a, lot that, we'll get a lot of money in that road fund for the Innovate Mount project. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Steve, scintillating presentation. Thank you. <laughs> scintillating. <laughs> um, How exciting can you make charts and graphs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple questions. Uh, you're mentioning 2021, the personnel trend is, is below budget. Is that because of labor shortage and an unfilled positions? Yeah, yeah, unfilled positions, pretty much. Um, question from an accounting standpoint, something I just don't understand. Um, there are several fund balances that the carryover from the previous year was negative. Page 40 was one of them. So it's not about the specific fund. It's just how, how do we go one year to the next with a negative fund? Procedurally, how does that work? Interesting. I'll, I'll <laughs> um, That'll lead me, and it's not part of this presentation, but I'll, I'll give you a, a preview of something that we'll be bringing to you. Um, you end up, most of that's going to end up with being deferred revenues, basically. Deferred inflows. 
So if we don't, we spend money, we submit reimbursement requests to funding agencies. It's a timing issue. If we, if we don't get that money within 60 days of the year end, we can't count the revenue. So it's a then, timing issue. Right, it's a timing issue. Oh, okay. Right. Um, you had mentioned that you're proud of the fact that there's only three bond, bond uh, debt obligations outstanding. Has there been any discussions in the executive office about this budget next year of any other reasons that you might bond again? Not at this point. Good. I mean, these big projects that we're talking about, Good. fortunately, the rescue plan money is yeah. there. Free money. Um, well. Final thing, <laughs> just more of a comment, I think, is on the property taxes, isn't there about a two-year delay? Um, so yeah, when you're showing a 5% yeah. improvement anyways, it's really what's going to happen. Yeah, next year is affected. Two years ago numbers. of what happened is what's going right. to affect. So as of December of this year, those values yeah. indicate what happened. So even if there is a and decrease. And there are sales studies that have two-year delays. Yeah. When Kristen Seeloff is here to talk about the equalization budget, she'll be. Yeah, it, it's so whatever the downturn is in 2022, it'll affect us in 24. 24-ish, yeah. yeah. All right, like thank that. you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Tuzak. Thank you, Chair. I have a variety of questions. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the bonding for Central Campus. What does that mean? I was not here. So, what is Central as part Campus? Of the, so, in 2013, you may have been aware we had a fire over at the old building. Okay. And so we had to gut that building. And at the same time, so it's we, all this stuff downtown. Yeah, the new parking deck, the new foundations of the old building, the court building, all of that. We issued 45 million. Okay. I just didn't know you were referring to that and I didn't know what it meant. Yep, that's it. Um, I understand you're talking about the recovery money, which is going to be virtually all capital improvement and be in that segment. Right. The COVID money we anticipate will all be spent by the end of this budget year. There won't be any hangover has, into the next has budget to be. year. Has to be. Has to be by, by law. Okay. We're not planning on returning any, are we? No, not to my knowledge. All right. <laughs> um, the uh, 46 new positions uh, that come from grants, mm -hmm. what is our history with grant-funded positions? Do they tend to stay? Do they stay for a couple of years? In terms of? Bringing on? Our Employees. Our practice has been if the grant funding goes away, the position the person the goes theory, away. The person goes away. Historically, we won't, generally speaking, when we get grants, they're here for a long time. Okay, Friends that's of the core. Chuck, <coughs> come to mind. Um, health grants. In this case, um, Tom Tomko is asking for 21 new staff members in the public defender's office. That's a state statute. They're rolling that out year by year. So. All right, so in general, on a practical level, these people Correct. come. Do these people, are? do we consider them employees? Do they participate yes. in health care and retirement yes. and all the rest yep. of that? Are they covered under collective bargaining agreements? Generally speaking, yes. Okay, so then my next question is about collective bargaining. You factored in a 2% here, but a lot of the contracts we've looked at expire at the end of 2021. For law enforcement? Most of the general ones expire in 22. Okay, so the 2% has, has been bargained and it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, I mean, it, I've worked with lots of employer, employers who put in a 2% and then you get to the bargaining table and it ends up more or less or whatever. Yeah, I don't really want to speak about No, exactly, but so the 2% for most of our bargaining units are goes, through, for 22. goes through 22. Right. Okay, and the law enforcement ones we just saw a couple last week yeah. uh, that expire at the end of this year, but uh, when I asked the question, indicated that they thought it would be easier to, bar to bargain for the next coming year with an, an amount in mind. All right, right. That's, that's what I was sort of wondering about. I have other questions, but they'll come with the specifics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Nice presentation, Steve. It really Thank is, you. even with the gesturing. It's good. <laughs> so, incidentally, um, as bad as COVID was, it actually was pretty good for us. For yeah, the we savings. came through COVID. Yeah. Uh, surprising. I, I think I mentioned to you before. It's surprising how 
we came through COVID. I mean, how much money we found huh, with COVID? So surprise. So yeah. uh, I'm going to piggyback on, on Commissioner Matuzek's uh, this grant funding. When the grants run out, and, and we have the dates for the grants run out, uh, are these people then just considered regular employees, and we pick it up as employees, or do they go away, just disappear because there's no more grant money? They disappear, but typically, I'm telling you, my history here over 30 years is these grants tend to be renewing grants every year. There may be some reduced funding. I can tell you, for example, in the, um, we call it the secondary road patrol program, which is 100% state funded. So patrols on like M59 and things like that. So years ago, um, Dave may be able to correct me if I'm wrong. I think we had seven or eight. We had seven deputies. Yeah, we had seven deputies. We have two now. So reduce, reduce, reduce as state funding has gone down, down, down. What happened to those other five deputies? So what happens is they get absorbed when other, typically when other vacancies are taking place in the general fund. As opposed to hiring, so a position becomes vacant, so you don't hire that person, you slide somebody from that grant into the next year. They always, they, they always have turnover over at the Sheriff's Department. Do you, so, offhand, do you know, you've got, what are the primary positions that are grants? Do you have an idea? Is it in the Sheriff's Department? It is in the prosecutor's office, who has a few. Do you have the... Uh, I, it's all over the board, Commissioner. They're all over the board. Friend of the court, child care fund, roads is really considered, you know... Yeah, the only concern yeah. I have is, again, as we just said, the grants run out, now they become employees. We didn't figure that into yeah, the that's budget. Yeah, that's not our practice. What does sort of happen is even if the person goes away, we may end up funding increasing pension, you know, not pension costs, but health care costs. But we have the bonds now, so that those budgetarily are fixed. The premiums could keep going up for those folks, and the grant fund, the grant funding is gone, if you will. But the wages go away. The wages go away. The other question I have is this. Uh, and, and the employee health care, dental, health life insurance. That all? Yeah. You mentioned there was uh, <clears throat> 10 new positions, I'm sorry, yeah, 10 new positions in the prosecutor's office, am I correct? Yes. Why do I hear that there was only seven? Is there actually- in the general fund. Again? Seven and a half in the general fund, two and a half in, the, in one of his grant programs for a total of 10. Oh, so he has two and a half right now being grant, in the grant fund. Grant funded. And seven we're putting and in those, two. Yeah, those two and a half are funded one third by the county, two thirds by the federal government. I don't know if you can answer this question, Steve. Well, there's 10 total, yet there's 21 people in the public defender's office. Now, are these, this, I mean, what, these are the, all the attorneys in the public defender's office? Is that, is that one? Yeah, right, yeah, and that's all state funded. All, all state all funded. All new money from the state. Oh, that's even better yet. <laughs> Works for me. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, may I ask you a question, please? Yes. If you, when you get done with your first round, could you, uh, would you consider um, asking the people who couldn't get into the machinery at all? Actually, taking the words out of my mouth, Commissioner, because okay. um, I see, oh, Commissioner Kraft just came on board here as well for the first round. So I was going to ask who else would like to speak in the first round, and then we'll go to the second round. So did you want to speak in the, in the first round, Commissioner Zinner? Okay, Commissioner Kraft and then Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be real quick. To piggyback off of Commissioner Romano's comments, is that the indigent defense? Is that why we're Yes, getting... that's indigent defense. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thank yep. you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I have a couple questions for you, Steve. Um, did you find any money coming off that tree for the HVAC for Martha T, the HVAC system? You're talking about the rescue plan tree? Any tree? Um, not yet. Okay. Kevin, Kevin's been chewing on my ear a little bit, so. Okay. We'll, well see. I've got the other ear. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that could be part of his request for that tenth of a mil or five hundredths of a mil. Uh, well, that's one point <clears throat> three mil. I think he needs one point three million. It's point zero five mil. Yeah, but I think he needs. I think he needs three mil for what he needs to accomplish in that building. Yeah. Yeah. So. I know he's. Okay. He's on the list. 
Yeah, so with I, with the other people I along with other several other people. But yeah, he's yeah I know he's I made know. me yeah he's been asking he's been yeah. asking for it. All right, I know I know everybody's after you. I just mm -hmm. wanted to just let let you, just wanted to check. Thank Do you so much. Um, I have a tenuous question for you here. You may not want to answer this. The money that's going into the jail that we have now, do you think that's, do you think that's wasted money? Should we have a different building? In terms of a jail? Yeah. I walked through it too. I would say this, to build a new jail is extremely expensive and requires new tax millage. I mean, we, I did, we went through this two or three years ago and it was, I know. It was a lot of money. And I, the sheriff has indicated that if we put, you know, put money into the tower, that given current populations, the tower will suffice for several years. I would, in terms of, do I think it's the right building? I'm not going to answer that. You can talk to the sheriff when he hears before you. I've talked to the sheriff. <laughs> he, he, he's just happy to, he, he says they, they take care of everything. That's what the sheriffs do. So, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. I will, well, I'll just keep my personal opinions okay, out of thank the public. You. <laughs> um, I know uh, listening to finance reports, uh, there's always a Debbie Downer, although I don't know what the young lady's name is in the back of the room. The Debbie, the Debbie that comes to my mind is a very positive person. But um, if we would have, if the country would have a terrible financial downturn, uh, the six million plus that you that is saved. Do you think that'd be enough for the county? You mean the three point six? I thought he said six point seven. I thought you said three point something, and that's what I wrote down. But well, I, three, I must have misunderstood. There's a three point six million dollar surplus. That's yes. Built into twenty two and then forecasted for twenty three and twenty four. Yes. That's what I depends thought. Depends on what said. happens with the real estate market. It depends on what goes on there. So I think, again, there's a couple of year delay or a year and a half delay on property values before they really impact us. So, you know, the Great Recession in 2008, you'll see in you know, what slide it is here. You know, Commissioner's Zinner, that was the surplus for this upcoming budget, right. this budget, and then the fund balance would be almost $76 million. Right, so there's money, there, there's fund Thank balance. You. We're in a position to be able to weather a storm much as we were 13 years ago. And so if property values come in at what we're projecting, property taxes are about 140 million, 145 million. Every 1% change in that's about 1.4 million. Right. So depends on what happens with property values. You'll see on slide 15, you know, it, it took a while, you know, a couple of years before 2008 really hit our property values. Um, because of Prop A, you can have a decrease in real value, you know, assessed value, or market value, you still have an increase in property tax bill, basically, because of Prop A. So it takes a little while, depending on how severe and fast the downturn would be. I think we lost 26% in four years back in 8, 9, 10, 11, that kind of thing. Yes. Well, I'd like to see the 5% come in, but I think that might be a little much for a lot of people in the county. But thank you very much for your time, yeah. sir, and thank you, Chair, very much. <laughs> Uh, any other commissioners on the first round? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to ask a couple questions, Steve, if I could. Um, printed copies of the budget. Where do we stand on that? We that? should have had. Did we get copies? Oh, for the twenty. The budget. This twenty twenty one budget. Yep. Didn't we transmit? Yeah. We will print. We are having the print shop print them for you guys. When do we expect? We don't those have a twenty one. I'm at the end of this week. End of this week. Yeah. Okay. For 21? No, no. Oh, for 20. What we're, what we're working on. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I know we have printed copies of 21. You're talking about printed copies of, yeah. of this. What you, what you to recommend? I, I, are you printing them? Yeah, That's what I have. thought. Um, in regards to the um, the grant funding for all the capital expenditures, I, I know, you know, we're going through a study right now to try and determine what those numbers are going to work out to be. I know it's what, about $105 million is kind of the number that's out there, $100 million, let's just say. Um, when, when do those projects have to be identified, and when do we have to spend the money by? So they, we have to commit 
funds by the end of 2024, meaning essentially we have to enter into contracts, purchase orders, and those sorts of things. And then we have two more years to actually spend down the cash. Okay, so, so 24 and 26, they have to Correct. be done. Okay. In, in order to comply with, with those requirements. Right. Okay. And whatever those other requirements are as far as what we can spend the money on specifically. Correct. We've, what we've already discussed. Okay. Um, you talked earlier about the 60 positions that um, were not filled and kind of rolled through and then departments have obviously made changes based on their needs. So did those 60 positions, are they still in the budget? Are they not in the budget? Have they been eliminated? Have, <clears throat> have all the departments, like where, where do we stand in all those positions in general? I don't know exactly. What I can tell you is when we had all the budgets submitted to us by the departments, 11 of those unfunded positions today were requested to be added to the budget in 2022. And for the most part, I'm going to tell you that we probably did add most of them back. So one-sixth of them were requested to be added, you said? Right, but then people asked for other things instead. Okay, so did their needs change because of what happened with COVID and they restructured or, or, or I mean, Various that's 50 reasons, positions. Yeah. Right, that just but then we're like, adding 30 other ones. Correct. You know, um, back kind of a thing. Or you need more, more positions because of different or changing operational needs and things of that nature. Okay, so that net overall change and as far I'll, as I'll in the positions. You, I'll tell you, for example, what comes to mind is the sheriff department. So what's happened in the sheriff department is they unfunded 19 positions for this year. Okay. I think there were 12. Help me out. Can't remember. Was it 12 corrections, six deputies, and a clerical staff, I think. Um, and what he's, at, what he's asked for is seven of those 12 back, seven of the 12 corrections, but he's agreed to unfund four more deputies. So the net increase is three, but we're also reducing overtime because the population's a little bit higher, so we're working overtime now. So it's kind of a, kind of a net of zero, okay. essentially. But there is not a need for as many court transport officers is what's really going on there. So they, in the old, I'll call it the old days, pre-COVID, they would run seven, eight, nine court cars a day. So they, you know, 14, eight, 16, 18 people transporting prisoners around to district courts and circuit court. They're running two, three, four now. So they can, they can reduce their deputy count, but increase their Corrections count basically. That makes sense. Okay. So my point is, there's still a number of unfunded positions at the sheriff's department of that, basically that 60, if you will. I don't know. I'm not sure that answered your question completely. No, it, it does. It does. I was just trying you know, to understand the net result of how many positions we're at based on where we've been. Right. So that that clears that up for me. Um, Ending fund balance of almost seventy-six million is—is is that the highest it's ever been with the county? I don't remember. No, I think it was eighty-two million. Eighty-two. And that would have been, yeah, you pressing like my 10, memory. Like ten, eleven. Yeah, you're pressing my memory now. Okay. Um, I think eighty-two million. I can't remember. If you want me to get the exact year, I'll get it. I think it was 82 million. Because we usually talk about that fund balance and we're at, you know, the kind of the line graph of where it's been over the years. Um, and I was just curious because I'm looking at the last, you know, three here and it's gone up, uh, was it almost 15, 15 million? Um, Correct. So I was just curious about that. Okay. It was a high of 82 and then recently after the Great Recession, I went down to 62, I think. And then it came back, back up. up. Yeah, I remember that. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Chair Brown, give me on the first round. I forgot I should have, I should have put in the 30 year history of fund balance. I, there's, I have a graph. <laughs> I, I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good report, Steve, and uh, um, good budget. 
The uh, um, you had a little talk about Commissioner Zinner's questions about Proposal A and Prop A and how much we were affected in you know 13 years ago in the, in the Great this Recession and how how badly we had to take hits around this. We cut a third of our employees roughly. It was bad times and things went down hard. And unfortunately, we in government can't recover as quickly because the, the way the tax process is set up. So we can't respond quickly to the downturns. So we've done a good job through the years of making sure we've maintained a conservative budget, not expanding too much and taking care of our employees when we have a downturn and not get expanding too much. To a credit to the staff, and this budget again looks pretty good. The expenses, the, ex the expenses over last year again are pretty low. What is it? Three percent, I think, isn't it? It's about three percent this year's budget over last year. It's about. It that. will, but you have to count for the change in the. While well, we are accounting for the dispatch fund, though, that's another seven million. So I think it's five. More closer to five percent if you didn't. Yeah, it'd be 5.3 percent. Hmm, well, if we left, if we left same, everything the same relative to the dispatch function, it would have yes. been about 5.3 percent. Yeah. But again, that's two percent built in just for wage. Well, increases. we're creeping up then because the last three years we've had about it's been about three percent, and so right. So that's a little concerning, right? I mean, we want to we don't want to go back to the old days where we had you know almost double digit budget ex from one year to the next and. So we've got, a, we've got a lot of money this year, thanks to the graciousness of our great father in Washington, who gave us a lot of money to help us out. But, you know, we got to make sure we maintain a tight ship. And we've also got Don Bettame. How much, what's our bonded indebtedness in terms of percentage of, there's a, there's a number that the, the rating services like to use and look at counties to see what our bonded and ratingness is. How much percent of our bond Basis our general fund. Um, in terms of our total out, total yeah, yeah. total debt outstanding as a percentage of of our annual budget of the annual budget. Oh, we've got, uh, I mean, you you know that you probably have to go back and get that number, but it's a it's a thing you typically use every we go to. Well, they have legal debt margin. You may be talking about legal debt margin, but I, which our but legal debt like, margin can we, be. We've tempered. always been about five percent or under, I think. Okay, maybe you're talking about debt service expense as a percentage mm. of total expense? Yeah, it's a way to compare county's health, especially when the city of Troy was going through their bankruptcies and things like that. That number popped up again to people look at and say, well, what is their amount of bonded indebtedness? Because they were so much in debt because they, hadn't, they made commitments to employees they couldn't keep and and they were borrowing to pay bills and all the rest. Let's check that number out. Yeah, you could, maybe you could be I'll, talking as debt, kind of a debt to equity ratio. Yes, so, something so we've like, got two hundred and forty three yeah. million dollars of outstanding debt. Our our fund balance is seventy two or something like that. So three times. Yeah. Is our debt any, service is about eighteen million in total mm -hmm. as part of a two hundred and that's not entirely all general fund money, though. About seventy percent of that's general fund money. Any of the money is just budget. All this, 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 this money that we've received. Any of this money going to be going to help pay down some of the debt that we have? Any, any, any besides it, we've got scheduled payments that we're always making. You talk is about anything we're going to try to accelerate? Like the federal money? Are you no, I mean our just our total debt. All of our debt, our debt portfolio we have right now, our bonds. I'm thinking about our bonds. Right. Bond and indebtedness. How much? Are we planning to pay any of that debt down that we have on the books with, um, on this year's budget? Yeah, we have standard debt service yeah. built into the budget for 2022. Yeah. We We're going to pay anything off is what I'm saying. We paid two bond issues off in 21, mm -hmm. again, okay. with money we were able to set aside in 2020. Okay. So we, we paid down two issues early this year. Um, bonds we issued 20 years ago to uh, renovate the youth home and Martha T. Berry will be paid off in 20, March of 2022. Okay. So we don't have any plans to pay down some of those retiree health care bonds we can't pay down. Okay. There's call provisions where we can't do anything, All right. um, which is why we still have some of the old issues outstanding. Um, the central campus bonds are not callable until 2025, I believe. I think 
that issue had a 10 year call provision. And we had, at the time we refinanced the health care bonds or retiree health care bonds, the financial advisors did an analysis on refinancing the central campus bonds and it wasn't advantageous. So you remember the central campus bond, or I'm sorry, the retiree health care bonds, the outer years were bearing interest at four to 4.4 percent. We refinanced at a, uh, over 15 years at a basically a net rate of about 1.9 or two. Mm -hmm. But the rates on the central campus bonds, I think were between two and two and a half, I believe. I don't know that it off the top, you know, right, I don't have anything in front of me to tell me that, but I th that's why it wasn't advantageous to refinance them. It just didn't work out. I'd be curious to see a chart on what we've paid out of the fund to our uh, retirees' uh, health care funds and you know, this amount of, out of the general fund every year. Because when we set the, we, when, we, when we financed to take care of our obligations that we made to our employees for many years without any concern about how we we're going to pay them back in the future, we now have a plan in place to do that. We've taken care of it responsibly within our internal cash fund without having to go to the taxpayers of the state the way the city of Detroit did when they collapsed. But we did the right thing, and, but the, and the bond pro, and it's working wonderfully, as you've said numerous times. So but far, I, it's working like out to, well. But it's worked out great. I'd like to see the numbers of what has come out of our general fund to, to make those payments, just to, just so maybe to show the board and instructively how much goes into covering our costs for our retirees and our existing employees for health care and retirement. In terms of the bond payments only? No, total. Or total, 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 total premium costs. Yeah, total premium costs. Because there's a downward pressure on our budget, right? We didn't have any bills. We you know, we you know, we could do a lot more on here. We've got actually. I would say that by issuing the bonds, we sort of negated the downward pressure on the budget because the premiums are being paid out of the retiree health care plan. Yeah. And before we issued the bonds, we were paying cash into the retiree health care fund just to pay the current premiums. We weren't setting anything aside to pre-fund. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in the last five years is the debt services are fixed costs. So we turned a, what you could term as a soft cost into a hard cost because we're, we're stuck with the debt service payments, obviously. But those soft costs were going to exceed the debt service at some point, and it only took a couple of years for that to happen. So we're start, you know, we're we're fixed at about 18 million. 30 percent of that, roughly, is paid by grants. So, okay. you know, the difference is what's being absorbed by the. It's worked out better than we we even imagined. We couldn't imagine how good it's been, really. So far. So far. Market performance. We, we going back to the grant funds. Commissioner has asked questions about grant funds. We've always been on this board had when the grant runs out, so goes the position. If you're funded by a grant, the position's just gone. Just because we don't want to have creep because someone gave us some money from somewhere else to pay for something that we couldn't afford out of our general fund originally. So, <coughs> um, but as, as Steve pointed out, we've a lot of those things continued over a long period of time and they've been a continual program. But if those funds run out, we've traditionally around here eliminated the positions. It's up to us, but we've been acting responsibly. And because we've acted so responsibly in the past, we're in a good position now to weather the next downturn, hopefully. So, um, but a good budget. Looking forward to the discussion as we go through the budget. But um, thank you and your whole team for putting together a budget. Uh, um, I like the bottom line. I mean, it's, it's, overall, it looks pretty good. So, it's going to be some tweak. You know, we'll, we'll look at it. But uh, looks good at the outset. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See no one else on the first round. Anyone on the second round? Okay, I'll go with Commissioner Kleinfeld. I, I have a number of names still up on my board, so. Okay, that, uh, I'm just doing a little bit of wrap up uh, anyway. So um, um, with respect to the grant funding, um, um, Chair Brown is right. Um, we had a meeting, um, a pre-budget meeting, and Executive Hackle made it clear that when the, but when the grants run out, the positions run out. Having said that, if you're wondering what happens to a lot of these people, they get an opportunity once they get their foot in the door to apply for openings for positions that aren't grant positions. 
So a lot, I mean, they don't usually end up just running out of a position. While they're in those positions, they're probably looking for positions, and as positions open up, they fill those. So it kind of works that way. Um, the public defenders, and I don't know if new commissioners un understand this, because it, it does look like a huge addition of positions, but everything transitioned over. We used to contract for public defenders, so they were paid for each time they dealt with a specific client, they were paid money. They were not paid well, but they were paid money. So we were already paying for public defenders. We were just paying for it in a different way. Um, the state, after a huge study on that, said we, you know, we can't just be doing that. We need to have an office, and the state's going to uh, fund that. But but we all we we were already providing the service. We were just doing it in a different way. I do want to touch on two more things. And the five percent, I just wanted people to understand that doesn't mean that the it, that individuals' property taxes are going to go up five percent. Um, right. First of all, it's the 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 uh, the new um, construction is is calculated in that. But even more importantly, we don't. All, what we get out of property taxes is not the property tax bill. It's just a small portion of the property tax bill, and then there are other things. So I just didn't want anybody to think that if if we approve the budget, property taxes are going to go up 5%. And then the last thing I want to say is with regard to weathering the storm, if we go through what we went through in 2008 ever again, I don't, especially shortly after recovering from the last one, there won't be any recovering. But there won't be any recovering for any county or any city or any township yeah, in the state be, of Michigan. We won't be unique. No, the entire system in Michigan will collapse. And everybody in Lansing knows that. And they know that um, these two items that were put in the Constitution were put in like 30 years apart, if not more. And if they don't fit, if it, if we don't change the Constitution, we are always going to be sitting on the edge of hoping that we never have that type of crash again. But if we do have that type of crash again, we may not survive. If you remember all the talk about emergency managers the last time, that wasn't because the cities all of a sudden started spending money. It was because this collapse happened, and uh, it's a it's a fight. It's brought up at, in Lansing every day. This tax structure needs to be changed because I, this will eventually happen again. Hopefully it won't happen for 40 or 50 years. Um, but if it did happen sooner, like I know you suspected it will, it'll be catastrophic for the whole state and nobody's going to be looking at Macomb County. Thank you. The whole country. The, well, just specifically our state. Nice, right up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next on the list I have is uh, Chair Brown, but I, I think that might be an error. Okay, I'll pass. Commissioner Kraft, second round. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to be more bright and cheery. Let's talk about paying off debt. <laughs> so, Steve, you, I'm looking at the, the slide right now, slide 18, and we have four in 22. We make our final payment on Martha T. Berry refunding in 22, correct? That drops off. Uh -huh. That's $2 million dollars that we're not paying for that anymore. What happens to that $2.1 million? What do, we have, do we have plans to put it towards maybe the central campus to pay that off a few years earlier? Can we do that? Does that go back into general yeah, fund? Can't, we can't, we don't have any call provisions until 25, so okay. we, we can't really do anything. It kind of cut, I did a little rough math and if we added the 2 million, you know, we would be done by about 27, 28, but if we can't jump on that until 25, it yeah, we have call doesn't make much difference. Which is okay. why you end up getting more favorable interest rates because it protects the bondholders from sure. you calling yeah. early. And you said the health care we can't yeah. Cause really. Because we just reissued, so we got 10 year call provisions on right. the new ones, which can't do anything until 2030. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. $2 million. <laughs> okay. Thank you for lighting it up, Commissioner Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martha T. Berry's paying a good portion of that. So. 
Okay, uh, I don't see anyone else on my list for second round. Any other second round speakers? Uh, Chair Brown. I did forget one one point that, so you, did I hear you right? You said you included, you assumed that the board was going to pass another tax, another tax for Martha T. Berry in this budget. Is that what you said? I'm not assuming anything. <laughs> you, put, you put it in here? It was, Kevin built it into the budget. I'm not so gonna, it's what he submitted to you. What he submitted to us was. And you allowed it to be put out to us. <laughs> his budget request. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people requested a lot of things that didn't get in the budget, right? So I'm just saying. Um, and, uh, the chances of that happening, I hope, are, are going to be are going to be long. Let me just tell you that because that that's something I'll pose right off the bat. So. We're not going to give him another tax increase to fund their operation over it. They can't. That was just a one-time deal for a special circumstance. Those circumstances have passed now. They got to stand on their own, in my opinion. And the, you know, they can't stand on their cash flow. Then they have to figure something else out. But it's not going to cut another. Yeah, he'll, we're not going to pass a tax on to somebody else to take care of an operation should stand on its own. So yeah, that's he'll, my he'll personal editorial pitch. comment on he that. He will. He'll make his pitch. Yeah. Well. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On that happy note, I'll end. <laughs> okay, I see no one else on second round. Oh, Commissioner oh, Zinner. I'm on. I'm on. Um, uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld, I, I'm not saying that, that, that we're going to have a problem. I just want to be prepared. I was a Girl Scout for many years, Troop 224. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for being prepared. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Romano? No, I just want to vote. No, nope, just want to vote. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else on second round? So the Commissioner Romano's request can be uh, satisfied. Okay. Chair? Oh. Um, Commissioner Just Sloan? a clarification we're voting to receive and file, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no one other speakers, please vote. Zinner? Yes. Kleinfeld votes yes. Motion passes 12 to 0. Good job, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, team. Um, as the process now begins, uh, obviously, as we go through it, um, I know there'll be a lot of questions, and uh, we'll get through it. And I, I know Steve and his team will be here to, to back up all the departments and any other additional questions that they may not uh, have answers to. So, but uh, thank you for getting this to us, Steve. Um, item number seven, commissioner's comments. I'll go with Commissioner Hall because he obviously can't use his uh, iPads, but he raised thank his hand you. professionally. So we'll Steve, go ahead first. Before you leave, thank you and your team for the presentation. I, I know him well. I think the chairman's comments was uh, pretty close to shoot the messenger, but I think you got that message as well. <laughs> Um, I do want to say this though, there's four of us, one, two, three, that are sitting here that can't use these things. We didn't have this problem before we went to the new system. I don't, and Don had the problem at the last meeting. I don't know if it's user error, which I don't shake your head over there, <laughs> or system error, or what it is, but this has got to stop. Uh, what it takes to get this thing working by tomorrow when I'm chairing a committee meeting, I sure hope that it gets done. If we've got to come in early, if we have to do a tutorial, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying this isn't working. So, Crystal, I'll leave it up to you. If you want us all here early, I'm all in. Thanks. That's all I have, Chairman. Commissioner Zinner. Um, today, my husband and I have been married for 42 years. He said he was going to be part of public participation, but I don't see him, Commissioner. <laughs> Any other Commissioner comments? Commissioner Kleinfeld. 
um, well, I'm not threatening like <laughs> Commissioner Ha, but I logged in at home on, and I'm using the same password and it's saying it's invalid and I got it on my phone but the red circle didn't come up and I've got current speaker and a list of agendas at the same time on my phone. I don't understand that, but it allowed me to request to speak but not vote. So, um, so, uh, <laughs> so now she wants to throw. I feel like 99% of the time it's user error when it comes to me. But I know 100% what the password was, so I don't know why it was not being accepted. So I don't feel like in this particular situation it's user error. But I'm also not blaming um, our staff, I'm blaming the folks at Civic Clerk. Thank you. Oh, oh, everybody, I do have my business in Salt Lake um, next week, so I'll be missing those meetings. Just want to remind everybody. Oh, Joe's so happy about that. So we don't have to fix yours? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yep. Any other commissioner comments? Oh, Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Um, I need some training on the new system, how to get into the admin side. Because when I go to the admin thing that we used to use, it goes actually to the old civic clerk login, which why hasn't the civic clerk company taken that offline if it's the old one? So I'd like to see the old one offline and I'd like to know how to do the, I mean, it, I'm, I'm coming up next week to approve agenda items. I have no clue how to do that. So if I miss something, just point me at what I should have read. Otherwise, I need some training. Thank you. That's happening to all of us, Dom, just not you. So it's not user error. Well, this is the way we get the budget passed, so I'll change it. Any other commissioner comments? Okay, I, I just want to mention something really quick as we go through the budget process. I know in, in previous terms uh, we've had a running total rather than having amendments at every single meeting and then getting to the last day and then revoting on amendments and changing everything up. Um, I know Chair Brown, if you want to speak on this, but. Um, I think the easiest way to get through this budget is, is to have a running total and if some of you will be making um, items that you want to add to this budget or changes that you want to make to this budget. So um, I think what we're going to do as we've discussed this is we'll have a running total so we can see as the budget is changing based on these meetings and you can make them during those committee meetings, you can make them the last day before we approve this budget. You have an, you know that entire window to do that. Um, I'd ask that you bring them sooner than later. Um, just so that we can have those discussions sooner than later um, and that we're not pressed for time at the 11th hour trying to get a budget passed with 20 additional things that everyone's adding on. So that's all I want to say uh, in regards to my comments. So I will go to item number eight, which is public participation. <laughs> Seeing nobody left after the budget presentation. Uh, oh, going oh, once. Second. We'll go to item number nine. Second Commissioner Romano. Seconded Second. by Commissioner Zinner. Please vote and. Kleinfeld votes yes. Have a great rest of the evening, everybody. Yes.